Marcelo. It's wonderful to have you here at the Berlin School. Uh, coming from warm Brazil to cold Berlin. It's wonderful to have you here uh, uh, running a session on leading the industry. Um, let me ask you some questions. And the first one would be, you can look back and obviously look forward also uh, to a great career that has two sides of the coin. On one hand, you are a great maker, a great creative. On the other hand, you also have become a great leader of our industry of advertising, and uh, the world admires you. Now, uh, what's the distinction of both? It's very difficult to make the distinction, because I think one is consequence of the other, in a sense. Uh, in my point of view, I could not be a leader without being a maker. I think it's to lead someone, you have to understand what are you doing, what are you leading. I always think that the great, the best general has to be a good soldier in the beginning, has to have been. So I, I always try to focus myself on doing. If I'm not doing, I'm helping someone do it the way I used to do it. So I think it's very important to be a maker. I'm a maker. I'm a cook. I always see myself as a cook and not as a restaurant uh, manager. So restaurant manager is a consequence of my good cooking. And I, I hope when I'm 80, I will still feel myself as a cook and not as a manager. Well, nobody starts out as a leader. Maybe the, the only the born ones. Yeah? When, when did you notice that leadership suddenly was an issue for you? And, and how did you uh, cope with it? Uh, I, never, I never had a notion that I was a leader. I never had it. So I was in a position of, uh, from the beginning, I was looking or have a goal of developing good work and be in a place where I can do good work. And I work like hell. So I was working all the time. And to the example of my working, I help other people work in the same, in the same way I did. And you start actually like, I would say, like a snowball effect. You start doing things and there's someone coming close to you and doing the same stuff you're doing. And then suddenly you are teaching people how to do it. And then, and I never became a creative director, actually, in the sense before I joined my own agency. I was only creative director in my own agency. So before I was just an art director, but with a great influence among the other guys. So I never had the official state status of I am a creative director of an agency. I was never looking for that, so I was always looking for how to develop the best work possible. And I always want some kind of freedom and start my own agency. So the moment I joined BBDO, I was automatically creative director. But I never had, but I, I jumped from art director to owner of my own agency and then creative director. Yeah, yeah. So I never had a distinction of I'm a creative director of a big international agency or a Brazilian agency. So I never looked for f to become a great director. I looked so forward to have my own place. Are you saying everything fell into place yes. as uh, you were challenged? Yeah. But were there also struggles? Uh, suddenly you had your own agency. I mean, you uh, established your agency in a developing market. For me, as a young guy, I always had a dream of having my place. And when you have a dream like this, you have to be able to do, fulfill that dream. So I always, I could sell my stuff very easily because I have a very good connection to the clients. I could actually, I, I knew how to sell it. I knew how to communicate to the client and around the, my colleagues and so on. This is stuff I like because it is and this and this and this. I was very rational on explaining the way I came to the work and to sell it. So it was quite, quite easy and then since I always had a dream of having my place, and of course, there is some, when you are very young, you are blind to the difficulties. You don't see the difficulties. You just go ahead and you don't look around. If you don't look around too much, and I never looked around too much, I just wanted to have it, and I went for it. And now I realize, wow, I was very lucky. It was very risky, and I succeeded. But I could have, I could have failed miserably <laughs> and at that time if I look back. Yeah, yeah. But of I course, was, yeah. I wanted to have it from the beginning. 
Well, you have some, some very long-term relationships with some of your clients. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, can you talk a little bit about it? What really is the essence, what, what makes, this, uh, makes for a long-term relationship? <sighs> it's very difficult to explain why it happens like that, but I think there is one key element on that, which is, sounds like a cliche, but when it's true, it's not a cliche, it's a, it's a trust. And trust you build in the moment that you have a very open, open relationship with the client. And you talk to the client, and the client feels that you are not bullshitting him. You're not trying to sell something fake or trying to sell something that maybe he doesn't need, but we need it as an agency. And be very open-minded and say, ooh, I think we did a mistake. We come to the client and say, the campaign, the campaign that we did, did last month was not good enough. Let's redo it. And sometimes we pay the cost of, of uh, redoing a campaign just for the sake of keeping the client confident that we are not bullshitting him. So it's very, very simple in the sense of trust, but trust costs it a lot. So you have to be ready to pay the price for the trust. So the clients have the confidence, and we are sitting together, my partner and myself, and the client, we are not bullshitting him. They can look in the eye and say, this is, this is good, or this is bad, or mm, we did a mistake. So yeah, an open yeah. relationship. Well, what's you the experience with, your, with the clients you have and uh, uh, they are with you f for a long period of time. What, what's the behavior of paying the agency? We, the try, they, we try very, very hard to become indispensable to the clients. Uh, and to become indispensable to the client means that you have to develop the strategy, f good thinking. As the client look at the agency, I cannot survive in this market with all those guys. So I could it, but I, I, I'm going to lose a lot of, of ideas. And not only advertising ideas, strategic ideas, uh, product ideas, uh, uh, positioning ideas, placement ideas. Uh, so we need to become indispensable. Everybody should look at your Havaiana case. Yeah, exactly. I think. A, yeah, I mean example. here you have. A, yeah, I mean a kind of sandal. Yeah, it's a generic with some sandal. plastic, and you you walk to the beach. But what you've done with it, and yes. I think the agency, and particularly you, yeah, have done a lot to shape the vision, the future, and uh, this global cult that has been produced. Yeah. yeah? So how to develop an icon? It's not easy. But the moment you develop an icon, you develop, you give value to something which is, could be seen as a very cheap product, but you add value to it. And the value is intangible. Yeah. This is a work done for many, many years. If the client is changing agency all the time, he would never be in a position of doing something like this. Because it's, it's a matter of talent. It's a matter of uh, talent, focus on, and consistency. The consistency of doing good work for a certain amount, for a certain client. And it's doing like this for years. And, and the agency themselves, they are, I think, they are selling their products very cheap. Very, very well, cheap. Well, you know, I mean, my experience is wherever you have an agency with a strong creative leader, yeah. it's a different ball game. That's uh, true. If, if, if the creative in charge of running an agency within a team is strong and capable, and has the tools, and can build the trust with clients and the people. Suddenly, you know, it's a different place. Yeah? If the bar for the work, you know, sits high, and you want to craft something unique for a client, which is 
not easy because you're moving from uh, the comfortable place, from the comfort zone to something new. Mm -hmm. And over time, you set a new norm maybe, yeah? Yes. And, the, and the rest shifts towards your place, like the Havaianas case also. Yeah. Yeah? This is true. But I think <coughs> what is lacking in the business is the ability of say no. The ability to say no. Uh, the clients have the ability to say no. They say more no than yes all the time. But the agency are saying more yes than no all the time, which is bad for the business. Because you have, uh, for account reasons, for financial reasons, you sit in front of a client, you're not in position of saying no. And you see a lot of managers in the agency, I cannot say no because I'm going to lose this so much amount of money and we need it for our revenue and for my bonus, for the bonus of the, all the, uh, the workers and so on. Yeah. So it's the ability of saying no. In the, in the past, you remember uh, personalities like Shay Shai, you could tell, you can, Alan Rosenshines, or you can tell a lot of names in, in, in the industry. Uh, they have such a strong personality. The moment they walk in the room, they impose themselves, and they are, were able to say no with a very gentle, gentle way, but the client would understand, okay, maybe I, we should change. Now I see the power has shifted from, from the agency, the personality from the agency is more, I would say, mm, homogeneous. There's no yeah, yeah. big personality, it's more yeah, to say yeah. no, yes, no, yes. Or, yeah, because it has become a money directed money issue. business. Yeah, yeah, it's a money issue. Yeah, and, and actually great work produces better money. Yeah, but yes. it seems that nobody gets a balance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, the, uh, the, the big, one of the big dynamics in, in the business is obviously the digitalization, yeah, that uh, uh, you are famous for great print work, for great TV commercials. But recently, I have seen some wonderful work coming from you uh, in the interactive uh, 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 field. Was it a struggle for you mm. to get into it? Yeah, it was a little bit. I, we, <coughs> we chose a different path than the average agency. Uh, during the bubble, everybody started a company, internet company. Mm. In exactly that time, we started in the agency a small group of people working together with a creative department as internet. And I remember uh, lots of clients and a lot of people inside the agencies want us to develop a new agency. And I always thought, and we discussed together with my partner, it would be stupid to develop an agency separated from our agency because the moment you do this, you say this new agency is the new, this is the future. And the old agency is the, is the past. Mm. So we have to integrate the new in the, in the old fashion business as the people like to say. So the advertising agency, they were uh, condemning themselves to become dinosaurs in the moment they start something new. Yeah. They shouldn't start something new. They should integrate the new from the sure. beginning. Yeah. So, and I remember in the discussion in a board meeting we had, and everybody was saying about building different agencies, network, and so on. It's like, we should put everything together. Because the moment you see it together, the agency is not, doesn't become old fashioned. So, we always had inside the agency this department. Now, in the last year, we put the whole internet creative team together with the creative team of offline. So everybody's sitting together in the mm -hmm. same place. We have a creative director for internet and creative director for offline, but they all sit in, in 10 meters range mm -hmm. from each other. So every single uh, piece of work is developed together. So the strategy is developed together. So sometimes we become agents of internet agents of the year last year in Brazil for the first time. It always was uh, internet small agencies that became agents of the year for six years in a row, and then suddenly our video become agents of the year for internet. Everybody, thought, oh, something's and then has that pay off. So we are at the same time old and new. So. Well, I mean, talking about agency of the year, you have been twice in Donald Gunn's. Uh, 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 in the in the in the gun report, uh, been agency of the single agency of the year in the whole world. Huh? Uh, you uh, have uncountable awards from award shows and uh, uh, numerous cons. You you have been very present uh, in in the industry, uh, running the can juries and and so forth. Um, well, what, what's next? What's next for you, for your agency? 
for the ages, I hope it's gonna keep the same. If I if I keep the agency in the in in the way it is now and capable of being good enough for the future that's coming, uh, I think it's a good it's a big task already. Personally, I have no idea. I have to find it out. So everybody asks me, you have done everything you could have wanted. What else do you want? I want to keep happy. This, if I can still keep happy, I can do the business for a couple of years more. Well, um, uh, we are almost at the end. Uh, one, I mean, you have been a great supporter already for the school. You sent Luis Sanchez. Uh, and for the next class, uh, you um, um, brought uh, Sergio Mugnani. Yeah? He's our creative director for internet. For, for yeah. internet. Uh, I mean, th this will be fantastic. Uh, so uh, it seems that the school is also working for you. Definitely, yes. You have to understand one thing. We are, we are we Brazilians. We speak Portuguese. We live in a country that is very far away from every single uh, center of advertising and business. And the Brazilians tend to be a little bit shy in the worldwide stage because of the language, because of the barriers. They don't, they don't feel in Europe at home like they feel at home in Sao Paulo. Uh, to go abroad in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, you have to fly four hours to go to the... In, in Germany, you, yeah. you walk yeah. Yeah. over, the, over the, yeah. uh, to the next country. So I think it's very important for young Brazilian creative people that go and have the sense of what's happening in the world and develop a sense of, um, of leadership. So how can I lead in a different language, in a different culture, and open their minds for, to become more international, to become more universal thinkers, and not only very good Brazilian thinkers, yeah. which yeah. are Everybody is very proud to be a Brazilian thinker. But as a Brazilian thinker, you have a narrow uh, way to go. So yeah, yeah. open the horizons, horizons and, right. and be more. Thanks to all those that on a voluntary basis came here and are working on that concept, including you. And I'm really looking forward to have you this afternoon in the class uh, working with the participants. Yeah? It's going to be fun. Thanks for being in Berlin. With Thank us. you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Marcel. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah.